everybody, welcome back to another Dice Tower review. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Miller Cleghorn. I'm Chris Yee. I'm Mike Delicio. Today we're taking a look at Heat Pedal to the Metal. From Days of Wonder here, a racing game, obviously, Formula One game, which is also a, a period game, because mm. this is not modern Formula One racing, it's actually based in the 60s. Um, hmm. Minor little detail, which you can get into if you mess with the uh, the campaign, sort of, the, the championship that is right, in here. Right. That's that's how you'd pick that up. So again, obviously a racing game, one that is pretty simple, comes with four tracks in here, but there's a few things in the box which are optional and give you a lot more content. Before I jump into any of that, obviously, and we discuss it all, let me give you a look at the basic game, how it works, what it looks like, and we'll be right back. In this overview, I'm going to be showing you the basic gameplay. There are various things in the box that you can use to change the uh, feel of the game. You can have a tournament, you can modify your upgrades that begin in your car, you can have AI racers racing around the track. There are various things you can do. I'm going to be showing you the most simple way to play. So you pick a track, here we've got France laid out. Everybody gets one of these dashboards for their car in their color. I'm playing yellow, I'm over here at the starting line. You have your starting shift, which will begin at one here. This being your shifter. And then you've got some starting cards. You have 12 cards that make up your deck with various numbers here. You have three starting upgrade cards, one of the things you could change if you choose to play with those advanced modes, but these three are the starting ones. And then you're going to have three of these uh, cards that get shuffled into your deck. They represent moments of uh, lapse in your concentration that might throw you for a bit of a loop, okay? So you begin with three of these, they're called stress cards, and they're gonna get shuffled into your deck. All of this, gets mixed up, gets placed right here, and then in this spot you'll put six heat. Heat represents how much you can stress your engine, how much heat it can withstand, and it is going to move from this potential heat pile, meaning you have access to them and can do uh, various things, can push your machine to the limit. They're going to go from here, they will be discarded and shuffled into your deck as your deck runs out, where hopefully you'll have them in your hand and you can cool down your engine by putting them back onto this pile. That's the general flow of those cards. Ideally, you want them here, not clogging up your hand, i.e. your abilities, all right? So, at the top of these boards is a breakdown of what the players will do on their turns. And I'm gonna take you through one of those. Then I'll explain the way corners work, and that should give you an idea of how the whole thing operates. Again, at a very basic introductory level. To set up the game, everybody has shuffled up all of these cards. You're going to draw a hand of seven, and we are good to go. So, starting from the start player here, and working their way back down the line, players are going to go through all of these steps. However, steps one and two, both of which are mandatory steps, can happen simultaneously. The first one is you may shift your gear and you can shift up or down on there however you want to do that. So at the beginning of the game I could shift one up boop, and this denotes how many cards I'll be playing uh, in the game. Be aware that I could go more than one, I could shift twice and go say from one to three. I'm gonna take heat for that so I would move one of these cards over here. I could do that if I want to stress my engine a little bit. Let me go ahead and deal myself one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. There we go. So at the beginning of the game, everybody does these two steps. The first one is shifting if they want to, and then playing a number of cards equal to that number there. In this case, two for me. I take a look at these cards. These cards are going to have a number often. That number is my speed. The sum of those cards is my speed. So for example, in, uh, I'm in gear two here. Second gear means I can play two cards, and if it's these two, I'll be moving six steps. Four plus two. Uh, this one here, the stress card, if I play that as one of my movement cards, I'll be flipping a card for a random value. Again, it's a lapse in concentration. And the heat card, one of which begins in my deck, well, 
it doesn't do anything in my hand. Ideally, I want to cool down my engine and drop it off here in the uh, engine pile in the center. All right, so I've shifted up to second gear. I would go ahead and put out a number of cards equal to what gear I'm in. And again, one and two here, done simultaneously by everyone. And then we go down the line, starting from step three, which is also mandatory, through the rest of these steps. Only mandatories are one, two, and three, and then drawing up at the end of the round back up to seven. The rest are situational or optional. So step three, I reveal these, and I move that many spaces. So six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Other cars in front of me will not block my way. So if both of these cars are here, for example, I will not be blocked. I could still go one, two, three, four, five, six, and end up there. That's okay. Um, if ever I am uh, in a space that has both locations available, I have to end up next to the racing line. The racing line is a thicker line around the board. That is basically the, the closer line. It puts you ahead. So you'll see it here coming around to there, and then the racing line switches to the inside, and you see the thicker white line is on the inside. Okay, that denotes who is in first place. Between these two cars right now, blue is ahead of red, because it's closer to the racing line. So there we go, that was step three. Now step four over here is a bonus for the last player or last two players in a, in a larger game to move that round, all right? So for example, um, for blue in this case, assuming blue is in last place, when they move, they may add plus one to their speed and they get a free cooldown, which we'll get to. So that's gonna apply to only the last player to move, to actually uh, who started at the end of the pack that round. Over here, we've got some bonuses you might be able to take. The bonuses are going to include that cooldown if you've earned any. And again, cooldown is very simple. It means you take a heat card from your hand, drop it off, which I would do because I also get a free cooldown on second gear. And you get three cooldowns on first gear. If you're going very slowly, your engine, of course, will cool down. Uh, and then you also have the ability to do other symbols of extra things that are in the box. And this one right here means you could boost. Boosting means I'm gonna put uh, a little stress on my engine, put one heat from here to here, and I am going to draw a card until I get one that is applicable, that has this symbol in the center, and I move that much extra. In this case, just a one. It's anywhere between a one and a four. You need to be careful with this so you don't blow past a corner uh, at too much speed, all right? So there we go, there's that one. That's my boost, which is optional, I can do it once. Next up comes, comes this slipstream step. Slipstreaming is if after I've gotten, gone through these steps and I get to my sixth step here, if I am directly behind someone or directly next to someone, I may slipstream their vehicle and move ahead too. So if I'm here, I could go one, two, and end up there. If I'm next to them, same thing, one, two, and I end up there. Once that's done, then I'm gonna check if I crossed any corners and if I went past them uh, too fast. I'll come back to that one. Then you can discard any cards you want to from your hand, however, not the ones that are not discardable. Those would be these stress cards. They have a little symbol here to remind you, hey, you can discard this, and the heat which also accumulates in your hand, and you cannot discard it. So you might have to downshift to empty heat out of your hand by putting it back on your engine here, the uh, center pile. Uh, once I've discarded, if I want to, I'll draw back up to seven, and it's the next player's uh, turn to go from revealing their cards, moving ahead, getting a bonus if they're last, using their cooldown, maybe a boost, maybe some other stuff, slipstreaming if there's someone directly ahead of them, uh, or uh, in the same position. And by the way, in this game, directly ahead is also this. If uh, players are like, so if for some reason here, it ends up being that I'm here and that player's ahead, this only happens when the racing line switches. Um, that's still somebody ahead of me. So I could still go boom, boom, one, two. All right. So that's uh, 
a rare occurrence, but it, it might matter. So the players will go down that, check if they blew past the corner, discard, draw again. All right. So let me talk about the corners. Uh, let's say I am here. These two players ended up somewhere like uh, that. It's my turn. I've got my cards. This is all discarded now, by the way, and I've drawn back up, and I am in second gear. Three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. I am going to attempt to go past this line at no more than five. Maybe. Uh, if I go at a speed higher than five, and I'm say I'm in second gear, I want to go to third gear. And I'm going to play that, that, and I'm going to risk it on one of these. When it comes to my turn, and I'm first, I would reveal these cards. So my speed is going to be four plus something drawn from the top of the deck. Let's see what it is. It's one. So this is done. So my speed is five. One, two, three, four, five. That's pretty good. I went past that corner, and this is where we check it, at five speed. I'm solid. However, if I had gone faster than that, or if I had boosted, which does add to my speed, I'm going to take heat equal to how much I went over. If I've blown past that at seven, I would be there, and I have to take two from here and move it to this pile. Um, the other players, of course, will go after me, and I only check my speed for the cards I played. If I chose to add plus one because I'm last, that counts against me. And if I boosted, that counts against me. Slipstreaming doesn't add to the speed at which I went past a corner. It's something that happens after that, and uh, or it technically is the step before, but it won't add to that total, the slipstreaming. So there you go. Um, that's the idea. That's pretty much how you play the game. Obviously, as your deck of cards runs out, you are going to shuffle that up and give yourself a refilled hand of seven. And all of that, those heat cards are going to start making their way into your hand, clogging you up. Uh, you're going to have all these stress cards messing with you, can be discarded, so you need to find a time to play them. Otherwise, they're just really uh, destroying your hand size by being stuck in your hand. But generally, that's the idea. The race is two laps around this, is the standard race. And whoever makes it past the finish line first there for that second lap is uh, going to be the winner. So hopefully that gives you an idea of everything that is going on. Like I said, there's a lot more in the box you can add, but I'll leave all of that uh, for another time. All right, folks, so there we go. That is the overview. I'm always excited for a new Days of Wonder game. Days of Wonder tends to put out gorgeous looking games. They're usually interesting. They've had their ups and downs. Mm -hmm. um, they've also oscillated all the way from very, very basic, simple family games yes. to, you know, um, uh, five tribes. But mm -hmm. strategic oh, yeah. depth. Yeah, I mean, yeah. a lot going on in some of those strategic games. This one, I would say, falls somewhere in the middle between those right. two extremes. As yeah. far as how much is going on, but also how approachable it seems to be. Right. Um, and we'll talk about the rules, because I think some of us are a little are, are feeling sort of the same way about those those rules. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be a little bit, no pun intended, clutchy. <laughs> um, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. But I think weight-wise, the game is somewhere in the middle, with the possibility to add things in, to right. throw extra things in, to strengthen that to make it more strategic but again let's talk about what we thought of the uh, gameplay itself and sort of that that first impression i was really excited about it yeah i didn't know anything about going uh, about this game going into it um, other than days of wonder and um you know it's really pretty and i enjoy racing you know things like that so very superficial kind of knowledge going into it and um i, I guess to the point that you just said there there really was a dichotomy of that first play it was like mm -hmm. wow i can tell this is really simple gameplay but i'm having a really hard time grasping it um for some reason it, it, it clutchy again like you said it was just kind of not fiddly not just kind of clutchy kind of um T difficult to pick up, and I think the player boards, the, the iconography was not very helpful. Just, it was not very intuitive to get into. I think it's safe, yeah. But at the same time, the gameplay is simple. So you have this, like, why am I not getting it kind of feeling, you know? And it definitely took that first play to re at least one lap, but really a whole first play mm -hmm. to get it. Okay, now let's play again. And then it got really fun. And mm -hmm. you could really see that push your luck and strategy kind of come together and how you can come up with that and 
push the heat, you know, see, see what you can do and kind of play with your car. I, th I do think that this is a game, just kind of piggybacking what you mm -hmm. off of what you said there a little bit, that if you tell players the first time that they come to the game, mm -hmm. you give them an expectation up front that you probably need to play a full lap before you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think it matters how good of a teacher you are. The way that the game is structured, the way that the, 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 the this placement of, of how you do things here, the structure of a turn is such, and it is un, not really intuitive, mm -hmm. you need to do it a few times. There's just right. no two ways about it. You need to do it a few times, and then once you do it, you're like, got it. This makes sense, and I think the destination is worth that journey ultimately yes yeah. It, yeah. it allows the game to be a pretty dynamic game right mm -hmm. but you need to go through that process you need to be like okay this is how it works this is how all of these disparate things are coming together it's a lot up front to take in and you mm -hmm. feel like it shouldn't be because you know it's a racing game and you're you're you know you're not really doing all that much but it it, it all comes together you just need to do it <laughs> if you right. first. Go so ahead, Chris, whenever go ahead. I teach it, I say, here's the dashboard, the player yeah. aid. It's a good player aid, just not yet. <laughs> I agree it's, with that. I feel weird. like they got oh. to that after a lot of plays, and right. along the way, lost first-time players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. Again, you'll you'll pick it up, and then it will be a good player aid. You're only going to be a, a learning player a short amount of time. Right. You'll yeah. be a player for much longer than that of this game. So that makes sense. It's okay, I guess, that trade-off is all right, but it does disparage a little bit on the, the brand new to the game. Right. Mm -hmm. I also think there's a couple of things they did that make sense, and it's fine, but they could have been done more smoothly. Mm -hmm. A basic thing is calling those cards heat, mm -hmm. and they sit on your engine block. That's good. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When they go, when you spend heat from your engine block, that's bad, okay? And then it cycles through, you cool it down by putting it back on the engine. That doesn't make sense, right. okay? I don't, might not know a lot about racing, but I know that's not how that works. <laughs> right. So calling those cards heat is not a great idea, I think. Mm -hmm. um, Again, you kind of just have to, maybe when you teach it, you make up what it make, what it's called. It's mm -hmm. not like it has a word on the card, I think, so it doesn't matter, right? Um, but there's a few things like that along the way that I thought were kind of a little backwards, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And the rule book also is a little, could, it, 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 I don't know, I don't want to say it assumes things, but it could definitely do with more details, more examples, a little more hand-holding. That's how I felt about that. Reading, I'm clarifying a few things on Board Game Geek because I'm playing it, which yeah. adds oh, to that clutchy feeling, mm -hmm. right? Because if I'm the one teaching, I'm like, ah, uh, someone asked a question. How does this exactly right. work? Let me check. Ooh, yeah. Pump the brakes there. Let's, mm -hmm. you know. But I think that what I think we're all kind of saying it's worth it to get past that weird initial play, those few questions, because I really like just kind of zooming along yeah. that track. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think the gameplay, the turn to turn, is very good. It's fast paced, which you want in a racing game. Mm -hmm. um, there is a nice jockeying for position. You were saying mm -hmm. it's very dynamic, and I agree yeah. with that. I think yeah. the gameplay feels dynamic. Right. This idea of, oh, my focus drifted for a second, so I slipped behind the pack. Right. But I can gun it now and try to catch up. Maybe I'll make it up enough to be able to, you know, uh, slipstream somebody right. and I'm, right. I'm back in second place or whatever. I really like that. It's a good, quick feeling kind of game. Yeah, so often I'll, I'll be talking about racing games, and to me the biggest sin you can have in a racing game is a game that doesn't feel like a race. Mm -hmm. right. That it's slow and plodding, and the theme is just, it's just there for a theme. It doesn't feel like a race. This absolutely feels like a true racing game. It, it feels quick. It has that, that sense of player agency even though you're going to have some luck involved. I mean, one of the cards is essentially a push-your-luck card, right? Yeah, I mean, right, it's yes, it right. built into the design. Yeah, right. However, I never felt like I was just completely flipping over cards and hoping. I mean, that mm -hmm. was one small element. I felt like if you want to hold back and push, try to make a, a, a long, strong push, depending on the track, some tracks mm -hmm. be more conducive to that than others, you can at least try that. If you want to go full out from the beginning and try to just, like, 
screech through those corners and hope for the best, you can do that. There's going to be some consequences. Maybe you can come back and make some dramatic, you know, it, it does, it allows you to do all of those it things does, right. within a pretty simple system, mm -hmm. all, all told. So. Yeah, I think I think that's what I liked most about it is it's a very once you once you get it and you kind of mm -hmm. get past that learning curve, um, you see how simple of a system it is, but all the different areas in which you can apply strategy. You know, yeah. I mean, even mm -hmm. from how many cards do you discard at the right. end because you're coming up on a tight corner and you have nothing but high cards, so you want to mm -hmm. try and get some more low cards or set up for the you know opposite. Um, or in the very beginning, when you're there's one module where you can draft, I guess, kind of your your car, and, and you can mm -hmm. I, I love that thematically. Mm -hmm. You know, you spent time in customizing your car, and and you know, so you can kind of go into more of a push push your luck strategy or a more um, flexible strategy with cards that can be a high or a low card. Mm -hmm. You know, your choose choice. So I really like mm -hmm. that there is is that push your luck, but at the end of the day, you feel strategic in playing it. You mm -hmm. feel like you're in a racing game, like you said, where it is, there, there's kind of a tight pack the whole time. Not my first learning game. That one's uh, <laughs> <laughs> off the table. Yeah, I don't know, we all not on that one. But, um, but, you know, there's a tight pack, and so you really are kind of reading, reading the road. Who's in front? Am I going to be able to slip? No, I'm not going to be able to slip. Oh, I'm going to have one extra because I'm behind, so therefore, if I play this and this, and I go around the corner, you know, it's it's very strategic. Yeah. You, know? you feel, I, th I like that you feel in this game mostly in control. Yes. Which I think is a good thing for a game in which I'm basically strapped into a rocket with wheels. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's good. I mean, that's a good feeling. I do feel mostly in control. Sometimes it's like, oh no, I was, I lost focus, flipped a four, I was hoping for a two or a one. Mm -hmm. I blew past that corner. My <laughs> engine just shouted at me. Mm -hmm. I'll try to make it up. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good feeling. Speaking of modules, we should dig into the modules a little bit because, again, I think if this game came with one double-sided track, mm -hmm. so two tracks, and the basic gameplay, I would have no issues with that mm -hmm. whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. In here, you're getting four tracks, so two double-sided maps, and you are getting four modules, right. mm -hmm. some of which are really involved. Yes, mm -hmm. you know that championship module. That's a whole shebang of mm -hmm. you know races and a whole a whole thing. So walking yeah, through the history, do this this race correspond to these years? Yeah. I mean, yeah. wild yeah. stuff. So there's four things here at the beginning. So we got the garage module lets you modify your cards. That's what mm -hmm. we were talking right. about. You can draft cards, and it changes some special cards you have uh, in your deck. Really cool. You can go for more cooldown, more push your luck for possibly a better return, but a riskier return. Mm -hmm. You know, cards that are, this card is a one or a five. Mm -hmm. It's your choice when you play it. Things like that, really neat stuff. Mm -hmm. Then we got the weather and road conditions, which is going to modify those four tracks further. Right. Yes. They will mess with your starting composition. They will mess with different things going on on the track. Really cool stuff. The Legends module is probably my favorite thing. Because it's AI drivers, basically, right. you know, drivers that the, the game is running. And it is such a clean system. It's so simple. It is so incredibly easy to manage to make the track feel crowded without a lot of overhead complexity. And to it's do also that. The, the fact that those AIs work that well, and that simply means that this has truly a wide player count range, yeah. too, which with racing games, it's tough to find two-player racing games that work. Or, or solo. a single yeah. player <laughs> racing game that work. Right. It's, it's almost this, unheard of. Yeah. I played the solo, and it was a great time. Yeah. It was fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, I was like, I'm, they're, they're keeping up with me. Mm -hmm. I'm doing everything the game would have me do in a four-player game with them slipstreaming and, oh, yeah. falling just behind the curve a little bit. And this one just came out of nowhere and overtook me. All that stuff is great. And then, like I said, the championship system, which has a lot of stuff going on in it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, a lot happening here. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about before we jump into some final thoughts on this one? Uh, really quickly, because I was going to mention into my final thoughts, but you may all have some thoughts also. This game's a, a looker. It is <laughs> a beautiful game. Gorgeous. So, yeah. It's except a gorgeous the, game. Except for the USA map, the one they just picked like the driest, most well, desert region. Really that did. that is true. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, but, but what if Las is. Vegas looked uglier? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Days of Wonder used to be considered kind of like the the crown jewel of publishers when it came to mm -hmm. productions and, yes. and and componentry, and there have been others since then that that you know now. 
they're a little bit more in line. But this, to me, is still a top-notch board game production. Yeah. All the way through, from the art to the components, it's just a really, really well-produced game, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I like the, the gear shift. The gear right. shift, yeah, just it's all those little, little touches, th- yeah. I was, yeah. I was thinking about that last night, and I think it kind of goes into both your points, both with the number of boards and the modularity, but also mm-hmm. the production. It kind of has a Kickstarter feeling, mm. but not a, not in a bloat sense, yeah. but in like a how much it feels like, oh, and you unlocked another board, and you got the Kickstarter exclusive board, and you it's got the Kickstarter. It's a generous game, right? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah generous, it has that. Right. Yeah. And again, not Kickstarter negative like the bloat, but it has that. You feel like you get a lot in it, mm-hmm. yeah. just out of the box, you know? All right, what do we got? Mike. Starting with me, Starting all right. With you. Well, um, I like racing games. I especially like racing games that feel like racing games. Um, that have that sense of speed, that have that sense of dynamism, that allow you to feel like you're in control, and if you're out of control, it's because you chose to push it, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And so this just, just does so many things well. It, you know, if you're not careful, it can it can make a little bit of a dicey first impression, but uh, push through it. It's worth it. It's an 8.5 for me. I think it's excellent. Uh, I and I do hope and knowing Days of Wonder, if a game does well for them. They tend to support it. Yes. I can see new maps with this. Sure. These um, days of wonder likes new maps. They likes new maps, <laughs> and, and, and so do I. So you know I what I mean? So Especially in, in a game that I like, and and this feels like it is ripe for, for plenty of new content, and I hope they do, because I think it's excellent. 8.5. I'm also giving this one an 8.5. I... Am really, uh, I'm really taken with it. I think that racing games are a genre. Sometimes I like them, and other times I think, yeah, that, that was a okay way to spend some time playing a game. This one is great. Um, I'm going to take just a second and compare it to Flam Rouge, because I know mm-hmm. some people are going to ask, right? Sure. Flam Rouge, the bicycle racing game. That one feels same very... Designers, right. Same that's, designers. Same designers. Same designers. Right. Uh, that one feels very organic. You get tired. Your deck literally wears out by the end of the game. I love that this one doesn't do that. I was hoping that this wasn't going to just be Flamme Rouge car game. Right, right. Mm. It's, this one's very mechanical, and I mean that both in the sense of there's a little bit more procedurality to each turn, but also it feels mechanical. Right. Like mm-hmm. you, you, motor-like, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and I love that because you can you can overclock your engine. You can really crank it, take a lot of heat, mm-hmm. knowing you're going to shuffle through it, knowing that you're going to come around a curve here, slam into first gear, and get a lot of cool down. You can, uh, you can modulate your cars with with better cooldown opportunities so you know I'm playing this game like a madman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mad Max has nothing on me. <laughs> right, right. I'm taking this three you know, this three point turn at like eight. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. I love that. It's mm-hmm. excellent. Yeah. Um I'm going to come in at an 8.5 as well. I went back and forth between that and a 9, and what holds me back from a 9 is just that getting into the game, that that first kind of getting into it. But I think that the more I play this and the more comfortable that becomes, my personal enjoyment is definitely going to go up. So I would absolutely recommend the game. I think it's excellent, um, but it does kind of hold back for that. And I, I like what you said, Chris, about how this one doesn't kind of grind. You feel like you're crawling across the finish line. You know, this because thematically that wouldn't work here. No, Your car exactly. parts don't start falling off. No, you start pushing it. <laughs> they you're do like, off my car. <laughs> <laughs> you remember? I do remember. Yeah. yeah. Like, come on, come on. I, was like, I, walk. I was in first gear for a, for a little bit there. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> You're putting up the sails. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but at the end, you don't care. You're just like, just get across the finish line, get as mm-hmm. far across as I can and really kind of push yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember there was one moment when I played, you know, I was fiddling with it um, by myself, and I had a really cool combo set up. I had one heat left, and it was my very last turn. It was like, okay, but I have this card from the module. If I play it, it'll get my last heat, but then I get one cool down so I can do it, and then I can push a little bit further. So mm-hmm. I had this combo-tastic feel of like really pushing it because you don't care you know you're like just get across the line and be first yeah. and um, I, I really like that feeling it's very exciting so I'm, yeah I'm coming in at 8.5 um, just be, just shy of nine just because of that getting into it that first play was was rough and and uh, he feels pretty stupid for about a lap and a half. <laughs> like, I don't get it. I promise I know how to drive. <laughs> Definitely a good driver. Well, for me, yeah. it's uh, it does not get a 10 because mm. of the, yeah, it's a little rough to learn, and the iconography is a little heavy-handed. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. It gets a 9. Mm-hmm. But absolutely a very strong 9. And again, this would have been a solid... 
eight at least if it didn't have right. basically the two you know two thirds or three quarters mm -hmm. of extra stuff that it has. It's already fantastic. You pack it full to the gills with all this other extra content that feels like included expansions already. Incredible. I mean, yeah. great yeah. content. You're going to keep coming back to this. If this is a game you end up liking, you've got a lot of gameplay right out of this box 100%. that you can do a lot with. You don't want to play the, the championship. You don't have to touch that stuff ever. You have a lot else to do. You, all, you mostly play solo. Here's a solid <laughs> solo yeah. game. There's not a lot you, of solo racing games. That you games don't have to do a yeah. lot with. You, know? mm -hmm. you want to modify your car while you play solo? Go for it. You can do that. Yeah. And uh, the other thing is that, that there's just not a lot of racing games. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, it's not a genre that gets a lot of love. Doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be a lot of them. And I love racing games. Mm -hmm. One comes along that looks this good, that works this well, that puts you in the driver's seat mm -hmm. in such an interesting, engaging, visceral kind of way. It's going to get a big thumbs up. So there you go. That is uh, a lot of thumbs up from us, folks. Mm -hmm. That is Heat, yes. Pedal to the Metal, from Days of Wonder. Um, and that's going to do it. My name is Z Garcia. I'm Miller Claghorn. I'm Chris Yee. And I'm Mike Delicio. We'll see you on the next one, folks. Uh, don't uh, burn out your engine. We'll push it. That was reverse. You're still going? <laughs>